Oh wow, we killed it already. Nice. <laughs> Alright, well that worked on the first try. I'm genuinely surprised. Um, well then, all the talking I was doing during the fight I don't need because, well, there's another plan I have for it that you'll obviously see. I'm gonna put music over it instead and just intro it with the first Lord of Cinder fight, my favorite one. Um, we kind of blew through it really quickly, so that was my first try. In the end, everything actually worked out, and I'm very happy with that. So I guess I'll just recap the few things I was saying. Um, Abyss Watchers, my favorite fight in the entire series by far. It does an excellent job, in my honest opinion, of setting up, like, a good feel, I suppose. Like, you... I, mm, having gone through it a few times, I feel like I should still explain it just in case. Uh... You can kind of tell that these guys are fighting each other, there's a lot of infighting, but you don't necessarily know why watching from an outside perspective until you like look into the item descriptions, but um, they're fighting each other because they're originally the Abyss Watchers would kill anything with the Abyss, you know, consuming it, but over time they started getting consumed by the Abyss, and since they're Lords of Cinder and they've been revived, they can't die essentially, so they're just endlessly murdering each other, attempting to get the Abyss away. Oh, dude, I love having that fight just because... Wow, we're doing a lot more damage than I expected. And so are you. Goodness gracious. I love that fight just for the fact that it feels like they set it up so well. Because the first two... The first one spawns. He has the actual boss health bar. The second one spawns, and he's just there to hit you. And he has his own health bar, but he'll keep coming back. And then the third one spawns, and we barely got to see him because I surprisingly did that so fast. But the third one spawns, and it's like, alright, now we're gonna have some fun. Because he's got red eyes, and he gets pissed. He will fight anyone. He does not care. Um, what actually essentially happens, as long as the other two are alive, he will always target the other Abyss Watchers, which I find absolutely hilarious. It makes that boss fight so interesting to me, because if I'm running something that I'm doing, like, and I'm still not quite adjusted to it, I can always just wait for that third one to come in and slap the hell out of his own teammates essentially and oh dude it's just they don't do that in any other fight and then i don't i mean the second phase of the fight's cool there's only so much to it but it's still like really pretty to watch his sword just light up and then he flips around and he's like i don't need anyone else i am the abyss watcher right now you will fight me and it's just because the majority of the of dark souls 3 uses double or not double uses two phases for some reason i don't know what their obsession was I feel like that's one of the boss fights that does it really well and it doesn't feel overwhelming. That's mainly because it's so early in the game and, I mean, at this point I only have 20 points into my health stat and I don't have crazy amounts of health, but they don't actually feel like they do too much damage at all. Um, but in between episodes, uh, I went, practiced a little bit, killed a bunch of Dark Wraiths outside of our first, the bonfire we started at. Um, I also got the Sunlight Talisman, which is essentially the strongest talisman in the game, specifically because it has, um, its weapon art is Unfaltering Prayer, I believe is the term, specifically, and basically it just gives me a bunch of hyper armor when I'm casting stuff with it, which will make, uh, casting things really nice and easy later on in the game, depending on if I need it. I mean, generally I won't, wow, bodied, I won't necessarily need it, but it's just something I'm gonna level up just in case. Generally, I struggle with them. I'm very happy with how this episode's going already. I think just eating and getting fat and happy before I did this really, uh, really mellowed me out. And then playing with friends the night before, Nick and Aerides, we've been playing on other characters. We're all, we all chose a caster, and I'm finally doing a full miracle playthrough on my other character, so I'm kind of, like, relaxed from that. Um, I got the Sunlight Talisman, and then I also got the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring. Both of those were in the swamp. But I didn't really want to waste the time putting them on camera because it's just me, hey, running through the swamp, getting poisoned, killing a giant crab for the for the uh, ring. Wow, parry way too early. I'm also, like, in the process of really attempting to learn how to parry, so I'm going to attempt it a ton. It's also going to be a bit weird because, ooh, large side knight is exactly what I need. Uh, it's going to be a bit weird, too, because I've been parrying with um, a smaller shield on my other character that I've been playing with Nick and Arity, so... Um, it might get really weird, because those are completely separate parrying times, like it's actually, there's frame data for it and stuff, and it can make things really awkward from time to time, because you have to adjust a little bit, but enough that someone who's not completely used to parrying might have a difficult time. Cough me. So yeah, I got that ring, and I got that talisman, and then somehow managed to get a bunch of Wolf's Blood Swordgrass for the Covenant, but I mean, it's not like I'm going to use it. And here we have Henri. Oh, 
Have you seen to my shepherd? Um, so fight? basically, they yeah, can't find Horus. If you happen up the, I mean, and uh, you know, Henry's a cool dude. Gal, depending on what you're playing, it's cool to help, but we don't know where Horus is, so we can't really help him. You can find Horus and tell him where Horus is, but it's definitely not a good outcome. Wow, you are a really good shot, my friend. So I'm going to choose not to, even if I do find Horus. Uh, we're going to see Henri a bit further on in the catacombs, which, speaking of, we're in the catacombs, something I didn't really acknowledge at first. Um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in the last episode, but I pretty much finally decided to figure it out in my head that we're not going to have an easy time beating this by the 20th unless I start rushing things, uploading every day, and even then I don't think it's going to happen. That's a giant ball of skeletons and that I got hit by. And you're the one piloting it, so we're going to kill you. And then we're going to wait for it to come back down because we'll get a fun item from it. Eventually. I'm pretty sure that's an ember right up there. There we go. Once you kill that, the next time it hits the wall, it blows up. And that gets us our next undead bone shard. I believe there are two bone shards within the catacombs and maybe one flask. I literally just played this last night on the other character and I actually do not recall off the top of my head. Yeah, please don't throw that. Um, fun gimmicks coming back is partially from the first game. Skeletons with white eyes will revive. It, they'll revive once. As you can see, I killed it once and now it's not glowing anymore. It drop stuff, that's good. Kukris, don't want those, but thanks. So you have to kill them twice. And why I say that partially returned from the first game is that there is a ton of skeletons in the first game. But you couldn't fully kill them unless you had a blessed weapon, essentially, which doesn't do nearly the same thing in this game, I'm pretty certain, but it kept them dead or else they'd just keep respawning. It was an interesting mechanic, to say the least, and it made a lot of sense in its own right. Oh boy, I'm gonna keep running so I can heal. You can parry them, and I really want to. I also did not mean to punch you. Eh, I'm better off just hitting it and killing it. I love that the split leaf is actually like throwing these skeletons on their butts. It's really entertaining to me. Oh, dude, I really am fat and happy right now. I haven't complained about this place at all. It's like actually not that tedious. The most tedious enemies in here, though, it's pretty much the one I killed for the sharp gem that was jumping around throwing stuff at me. That's pretty much the most tedious enemy within the catacombs. That's the one I actually do mind a little bit. But I had a decent time against it, does, does, so it doesn't really matter. Backstab. This one has red eyes, I don't think that means anything special besides it does more damage. And for whatever reason, I don't want to target it, I guess. I wonder if you could get a shield. Never really bothered to try. Hmm, I don't know, something for another time. I need to back up, because it's going to do that. Nice job. Just back you up. Completely missed that second one. Still really adjusting to the length of this split leaf. I noticed that was pretty much my most common issue when I was practicing a little bit before recording and before eating, unfortunately. Gosh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm still really getting used to the length of halberds, and I'm quickly learning that while the Lucerne did suck, and I had a lot of right to complain about it because it was horrible, um, I just don't think halberds are quite the same class I was used to from Dark Souls 2 by any means, especially because power stancing made such a big difference. Uh, another ball of skeletons. We could totally kill the one piloting that. Piloting, quote unquote. But we're gonna turn left to get a bonfire. Plus, there's not necessarily a reason to get rid of that one. It's kind of annoying, but it's also kind of just there. It also doesn't drop you anything, necessarily. Like, something will come out of it, which is just a little crab. That nobody knows why it's there. And people question it 24-7, because it's so random. But... And again, there's really no actual reason to do it. Oh yeah, there's ashes down here that I need to get. So that our lovely little shrine handmaiden will sell us more things. Pretty sure it killed the rats down here. Yeah, it did. There's a couple rats just strolling about. And he'll, he'll, the, you know, lovely little skeleton ball will run them over as it's going. There's a rat. And there's a bigger one coming at us. Yeah, there you are. Wow, we do so much damage. I love it. Keeping in mind, I have the exact minimum requirements for this weapon. Like, I have 
I think just exactly the amount of strength and dexterity, and I didn't bother pumping anymore because I want to pump it all into like faith and other things for the time being <laughs> until I can wield everything I need. So it's really interesting to see that I'm doing as much as I am damage wise, even like it's at plus five. So I think it's a bit ahead of where it should be at this point, but I mean, it's still like noticeably good. And I'm learning I actually really enjoy the rolling attack on this. This rat's just gonna get in the way. Back up, killed it. Okay, yep, this is exactly why I don't like them. So much mobility, they can poise through attacks, they have kukris for no reason that actually inflict bleed, and I still don't understand why that's a thing. And it's not like they just throw one, they throw like three. Yeah, you can kinda dodge them, but you also kinda can't. They're just tedious for no reason. It's like, alright, let's take this enemy and take it to 11 just because we can and make it more difficult than the boss that's coming up directly after them. There you go. Pretty sure every time you walk by this for the first time, like spawning at the bonfire or whatever, it always will go down. So it'll always spawn in that corner. Alright, moving on. Gonna have to kill these rats because the ball didn't do it for me. However, I'm gonna move out of the way just in case. Kill this one. I'm glad I killed them in one hit. That makes my life a million times easier. Grab my souls before I do anything, because I want to make sure I keep them. Wow, can't poise through that, can you? Charge up a heavy, just because I don't do damage. And kill it. Wow. It's too bad I'm not competent like that all the time. Especially on camera. Alright. There's the ashes right there, but there's also, you know, another one of these. There's like three or four of them up here. So I'm not going to bother dealing with all of them. I'm killing this one because it'll respawn. Or it'll kill me. I don't know which. Its eyes were white, so the assumption is it'll respawn. So I'm going to run. <laughs> we're not dealing with it. Yeah, I hear it respawning as we speak. Um, you could go back by that rat and take a right, but there's nothing really there of interest. At least not to me. Not that I can recall. At least I know we skipped it yesterday too when I was playing through this. Another little Titanite Lizard. Generally, this one will run through, like, I think it's, like, right here. This little area, it'll run and just clip through the wall and disappear into, like, eternity. It's so weird. This guy just, oh, he saw me. Well, we're gonna knock you off then, bud. Sorry. There you go. I've never legitimately killed that thing, because I've never actually had it not fall off. So, yeah. Fun stuff. Um, we need to pull this lever... God, why does it always do that? It glitches a little bit. Fun stuff. It just gives a shortcut. Totally could go in there, but it's going to spawn an invader I don't feel like dealing with right now. And as we run closer to this bridge, we're going to spawn a crap ton of skeletons that'll all chase you down. So I'm going to choose not to take a rickety bridge and instead go talk to Henri again. Because Henri is cool, I guess, and still lost, and I feel bad. Uh, no, still haven't seen the Horus. You can talk to him once more and just says nothing. So basically you're Horus. Yeah, see, look at all those skeletons. They don't even know what they're doing with themselves. I've spent, like, a couple playthroughs where I'll actually take the time to, like, kill them all, but it's not worth it. And if you look right around the tip of the split leaf right now, you can see Horus. That's where Horus went. Horus somehow fell from all the way up here, all the way down there, and lived. And it's pretty ridiculous. Oh, you actually can cross? Yo, I've never had that, and I don't like that. I'm gonna choose to knock the bridge down, because it's not worth dealing with all of them. Wow, I've never had them cross before. That's insanity. That's, like, actually scary, if you think about it. Like, all of them just chasing you. Good lord. Alright, before we actually go up to the boss that's right up those stairs... We're going to go down this bridge that created a ladder for us. And we're going to go watch Mob Fight Club if it works. It generally does. I've rarely ever had it not work. So last night actually being one example of a time it didn't. I'm choosing not to pan the camera to the right right now because that. But what you can do is you can lure it into hitting that Mimic. And the Mimic will get pissed. And the Mimic will go fight it. And that's the intention right now. Whoa, it obliterated the Mimic. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it's, see, it's still shooting the Mimic. 
This lovely fire sage stray demon <laughs> murdered me. Okay. Is the one that'll give you the demon's fist. And I say that specifically because I always try to come down here and kill it because I find it funny. That the thing still bodies me this far into me playing the game. Pretty often. The mimic does generally most of the work for me, actually. And last night it didn't work, and apparently today it's not going to work. But thankfully we got our shortcut, and now that I'm not embered, I don't have to be afraid to do it. We might still get invaded, but it won't stop me from doing what I need to do. Uh, it won't stop me from going into the boss room, it won't stop me from going down there. Because I'm pretty sure there's no fog that'll stop me until I was to get to the next area, which we will be going into. Well, hmm. Actually, we might not. I think I might do that in my free time just to grab the undead bone shards and uh, the Estus flask shards. Hmm. Because I know there is stuff down in that area and I'm going to want it just for completionist sake. Plus, it'll help us recover more, which is always important. I just realized I skipped the entirety of that shortcut. Henry's still up there. He'll stay there until we move on to the next area, and I'm pretty sure until a little bit after. Knock the bridge down. I want my souls back at the very least. We're going to give this one more go, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to give up and just move on to the boss for the time being. Come on, give me the option to descend, please. Sometime today. There we go. It's really iffy, but you will literally die if you don't get onto it. At least I'm almost certain that this health, I would die on that fall, so... Not really worth uh, not trying. He didn't kill the Mimic, so we can try this once more. I'm gonna jump down here. I definitely heard him hit the Mimic. Wow. He's like clipping into the wall. <laughs> That's unique. And then he just came back. The Mimic's hiding again. Oh no! Come on, man. You gotta hit him. Don't just take that. Alright, spew fire at us, please. You can't just take that from him. It's like that episode of Spongebob where he's like... Oh no. I'm dumb and didn't move in time. Or he's like... Oh, that just one shot me. Yeah, we're giving up. I'm grabbing my souls and leaving. Oh god, I can't even remember the Spongebob reference now. He's like, that's yours, now give it to him. And he's like, you can have it. I don't, uh, it's been so long. Good old Spongebob references. So I've had this work too. I'm gonna stop that. This is seriously my favorite. <laughs> I don't know why I enjoy this so much. I'm sick. I'm disgusting, okay? And it's so worth it. Alright, we got what we want. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this hellhole now. I got the bonfire after too. I did what I needed. Oh no. Back up the bridge. Got our souls, killed the things, because I wanted to have fun with Mob Fight Club. And as always, we're going to open a giant door that's going to take unnecessary amounts of time. Because Dark Souls! That's actually one of the faster doors, which is funny, because this one's made out of pure stone rather than wood. And in true Ash in One fashion, we're going to touch things. This is a goblet. Oh, well, I suppose in true Ash in one fashion, we can go grab other things, too. Hello. This is Wolnir. This is a dumb boss that I will never give credit for being a boss, because it's just unnecessary. 
So, oh goodness, I don't want to walk into that. The thing with Wolnir is, you touch his goblet, he freaks out because he doesn't like the dark, which is why he has these things on his, you know, wrist. And the gimmick of this fight is you break them, and then he dies. He doesn't die, he technically gets consumed by the dark, essentially. It's weird. It's a really dumb fight, specifically because, like, you can use the worst weapons and have the easiest time in this fight, because he just doesn't do anything. The most difficulty in this fight is, like, his arm clipping through the ground and giving you a hard time hitting it, and then his arm dragging you into the mist around his body, because that's an insta-kill, essentially. It just destroys your health bar. Or when he climbs up like this, because then his arms go flailing, and it's just a pain. Alright, see, so he's done. The only reason I felt confident enough to do the Abyss Watchers at the start of one episode was because I figured in the same episode I could go and just kill Wolnir without a problem. It's such an easy boss fight. It's really just one of those gimmick fights that the game throws at you just so you have an easy time, but it feels like you're making good progression. I don't hold that against the game, but at the same time, the boss fight's just so there. And it's so... It's not even buggy, it's just not refined. Because I've watched so many times where he'll just kind of shift his arm and it clips through the ground, or... I'll be... I usually co-op this boss just because it's so easy, you can walk in, kill it in a couple hits and leave, and it just really helps people out. Just to help move them forward. Some people are always down to get you free embers, essentially. There's times where I've watched a host as I'm helping, beating on the... You know, on his bracelets. I've watched a host walk up to the arm and then get dragged into the mist because the arm shifts back towards Wolnir's body and then just get insta-killed because they can't leave. Like, there's a lot of weirdness to that fight that I don't appreciate. So it's just like, alright, it's a gimmick. And it's cool because it helps the sense of progression, but at the same time, is it really worth it in the end because of how bad... Like, you can tell they didn't spend a lot of time on that fight. They kind of just put it there. It felt like there was a lot more ideas to it that ultimately they just didn't go with. But, I mean, it's there. And we did two bosses. I got two bosses in one video. And now we've officially entered Irithyll. But that we'll save for next episode. Because Irithyll is where this is either going to get 50 times harder... Or it's going to stay about as hard as it was. And definitely applauding that message. The amount of screenshots I've gotten from here though is insane. So I think in true, you know, myself fashion, we're going to get right about here. See, I don't want this there, but something's going to spawn behind us if I go too far. And take a screenshot. Not moving. There we go. Alrighty. With that, thank you all very much for watching. Have a great day, night, weekend, those other things. I hope you enjoyed two bosses in one video. I'm glad to get some really good progression in. Hopefully I'll have time to record every day from here on out, but I can't guarantee much. I'm still going to do my best to release within every other day. So, I'll talk to you guys all again soon.